Thank you for coming back to Polka Dot Mailbox. And if you're new, welcome. Today I'm going to do a junk journal with you. And I wanted to show you the books that I am choosing between. So I really love this spine on here. I'm going to be covering this with paper anyways, this part. So I was looking at this as an option. The only problem with this one is, it doesn't look like a cute book that my daughter would like to read. And the, the spine is glued here to the pages. And that makes it more difficult to remove. Plus the size of this is a little bit limiting because it's smaller. I found these in book boxes. I think this has good potential and I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. Look at the spine on this one. You can see that there's a space and it's easier to cut away the pages. And it's just the actual hard cover that I want to use. I don't love this binding at all. But I'm going to plan to cover it up with something like, for example, here's a piece of wrapping paper that could easily cover up the spine and look quite cute. So something like that with another scrap of paper or magazine cover or something over top is what I'm thinking. So that's where I'm going to start with the books. And then I've gathered some supplies. So here is an old stamp album that I picked up at a yard sale for free. They actually were just giving it away uh, in a donation box. And so I thought, you know what, I could put some of those pages and stamps and interesting papers to use. So I thought that was a neat thing to have. This was also at that same yard sale, just some patterns and that interesting kind of paper. I've been hanging on to this Happy Mail for a long time from Kathleen. And it was really cool because it's got all these stamps and it's got like a really interesting sound. So since it came all the way from Australia, I wanted to include that scrap papers that were laying around in my craft room. Some fun bags that would be nice. Another interesting bag that could be cut up. It's a nice pink. I did some tea stain pages, but I did a variety of different techniques. I like painted it with the tea bag. I tried crumpling it. I tried putting the teacup on the paper and like sort of painting around the edge and then splattering and letting drips fall. There's some more drips and drops. Again, this is like a fully painted page. So you can see the difference between all the different types of techniques I was trying. And uh, they have an interesting kind of texture. So those are some of my old materials and then some beautiful materials are here. I have been saving these beautiful handmade papers forever because I just couldn't bear to part with them. I wanted to like find the perfect use for them and I've decided that I am just going to go ahead and actually put some of them to use. Some of the different types of papers that there are here, a real large variety of these beautiful papers. This was, oh, like 10 or 15 years ago. Oh gosh, it was more. It was definitely 15 years ago at least. And I've been hanging on to these papers forever. And I thought now is a good time to bring them out. I spent $100 at the Japanese store. So back like that long ago, these papers were $12 and 95 cents. And because they were so expensive at the time, <laughs> they were all the same price. And I couldn't decide, so I got like every color. And I have used 
some of the materials in here to make cards and a variety of different things. But I'm not gonna hang on to these anymore. I have been hanging on to them for way too long. And it's time to actually put them to use. So this was the brand. It would be really interesting to know if this Japanese paper place is still in Toronto, if they still sell this like paper potluck. And um, I'm gonna include some of that in there. I'm also going to use some trims. So this was the only thing that was a good deal here. Apparently everything else was half price. It was unbelievable to me how much all these things cost. So it was like $30 <laughs> for, these, for these little lace trims. I thought this was really very pretty. This was the most expensive one. I don't know why. And I almost didn't buy it because it was like $24 a meter. So that was $24 a meter. This one was $12 a meter. I think this was around $10 a meter. This one was the least expensive, which makes sense because it's thin, but they none of them were cheap and they were on half price. So I can't even imagine paying full price for any of these things. <laughs> a look at this. This I bought because it was a clearance bin for $2 and it had kind of an interesting sort of texture. That's kind of neat. That'll be fun. So that's that. And the last thing that I'm going to use are some magazines. So if you've watched my channel recently, you'll know that I really love Daphne's Diary. And inside of the magazine are all these beautiful papers. I also have the scrapbook paper sheets that I can draw from. So I'm gonna go through those. This is the latest magazine that I have from Daphne's Diary. She has one new one just coming out. I've got some vellum sheets. So I've prepared my cover. I've also prepared my pages that are going to go on the cover. So I've decided to just do a pink background here with this beautiful Daphne's Diary as the focal point. And this is gonna be on the back. And then inside, we're going to have these two. So my spine has been done with the uh, wrapping paper, but I did a different wrapping paper because I wanted to keep sort of a neutral sort of gold color. And speaking of gold, the thing I'm gonna use now, I'm gonna go and stitch these before I glue them on. I'm going to use this premium metallic wax finish. So I'm going to go around all the edges with this paste and give this nice look to the edge like that. So I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to do my sewing. And then I'll show you how that looks. So I'm like enjoying that sort of finish on the edge. And one detail that I absolutely love is adding stitching. I find it makes a really big difference with texture to any page. I've used a straight stitch everywhere except for the cover. On the cover here, I've done a combination of straight and alternated with zigzags. Okay, so the pages are stitched and the cover is on. The binding looks nice. There's the back. I wanted the theme of this to be this shabby chic sort of look and colors. Oh, I have to tell you, I was in Michael's today buying this gold premium wax metallic finish. It was exactly what I was looking for and I'm really happy about it. But when I was in Michael's, 
they had their magazine section back. So I think I would put like this potentially in there. There's one pages, one section of pages and stories in here that I really want this. This is shabby chic and this has to go in this journal because like, look at this. Doesn't that just match perfectly? The same sort of vibe. So let's go ahead and take some of that out. Yeah, so anyway, so when I was there at Michael's, they have Daphne's Diary again. They didn't have their magazine section. Oh, I'm nervous to rip that one out. I really don't, I want this one too, so let's just start with this one. So the price for the magazine is $23 or $24. So it's still much better to get a subscription than it is to buy it in the store. But I can feel confident in ripping pages out and not worrying about using them up because I will know that I could always run to Michael's and get a new one. <laughs> so I want all of these pages, this whole series. It's got to go in here. I really am nervous to rip this one because I want to get as much of this image. Maybe I should cut it. I don't mind the other ones. I'll probably do a lot of cutting out of those other ones, but let's actually cut as much of this paper out right here. There. Beautiful. I want as much of that image as possible. The other ones are fine. That's really pretty. What papers do we have in this one? Mm. I'm going to use a lot of these elements in this book, but I don't want the Easter papers. I'll do some fussy cutting. This is okay, actually. That's nice because this can fold just in half. I'll cut this off and it'll go in there. Anyways, I'm going to play some more with the magazines and look through and find the pages. Once I made my first cut in this album, I was okay with, like this was the first thing I cut out. Okay, we are back. All of the trims are in and the cover is done and the signatures are installed. And I'm so happy with the outcome. It is exactly my favorite kind of colors, my favorite kind of vibe. I grabbed a few things from a bunch of other collections. I took this house from a marigold chipboard as well as this delightful. I fussy cut some ephemera from some minte papers as well as created these rolled flowers. I've added some little gems and some thread in behind there, popped up this butterfly, and that is what the book looks like. In, when you look inside, you open it up to my favorite start page. I wanted that to lead the book. Here I've stitched on some of those fabrics that peek out from the edge and inside it's a combination of papers from Daphne's diary, scrapbook papers, some antique sort of finds, my tea stained paper, this beautiful trim on the edge here. This was a rip out from the Daphne's diary agenda. I thought that would be 
a really useful way to use those pages because I had already had my planners for the year when I found that agenda. Some of my Japanese store papers. So a lot of these pages in here, I will just add things to them. And some of them I will leave freestanding on their own. Like I'm not gonna do anything with the vellum. I'm not likely to do anything with this. But I am going to go through and add my favorite images from Daphne's diary. This is the back page. This is March and this whole coloring and vibe matched what I wanted for this journal. So there's vellum over top of this, which I'm gonna leave. I ripped the edges of all these pages and I ripped these ones together so that they kind of stayed together. So that's really pretty on its own. I like this, lots of vintage. This is beautiful paper. This is from that actual paper book. And then that's the back of the first signature. So we're on to signature two. I may have made the signatures too large. <laughs> I might have put too many papers in there, but there were just so many things I wanted to include. I love the way that this turned out. This is that handmade paper. And I put a ruffled ridge on the edge of it. This little crinkly bag. Again, some more of that Japanese paper. This one, I really love, this is that $2 roll I found on sale. I really love the way that gives a little sparkle and shine to things. I think I should create a small sequin pocket here. Just fill it with some sequins and seal the edge. This was a recipe card, or a postcard actually, that came in the agenda, super cute. The middle of the second signature and now we're starting to get to the other halves of things the other half of that postcard the other half of what can turn be turned into sequin shaker there's a beautiful little trim i love those flowers some more vellum a soft paper that's so pretty on both sides it looks very different we're tying in a little bit of that yellow so this is like the color palette here. The neutrals, the yellows, the blues, the pinks, this mint green. I love this pom-pom trim. I feel like I should go back and get some more of this while it's still on sale. The other side of that bag, the other side of that paper, this time with torn edges. Tea stained paper, book page, and then the end of Signature two. This is the start of signature three. Again, another page torn out of my Daphne's diary agenda. And this beautiful teacup paper. This was from the agenda as well. It's just so cute. My Australian happy mail. And that's where I've sewed the edge on. This patchwork has this lace and then I sewed it right here I stitched it on the back and then I stapled it over the ends and so that just this little trio here peeks out and the same sort of elements some more of this lace it's beautiful texture of this handmade paper beautiful image again from that shabby chic and then the cute cat and then we're getting to the end papers here this is definitely something i'll want to cover and even this this is one page that i don't love the colors of this for this specific journal so that'll probably be covered 
stitched this beautiful trim on both sides. So I folded it over. It kind of had a natural fold to it, so I thought that would be kind of neat. And I stitched it through. And so you'll see it's pink on this side because I have two different threads in my bobbin versus the spool on the top. So the bobbin um, has the blue and this pink is the top. So you get a little bit of both on each side. And now we're reaching the end and that is the finish and these pages look like they were made together like i thought this was a really good match and you'll notice that i was saying that the center was really kind of like wavy but you really can't see it at all that binding in the in the center so that's what it looks like. I show you the back cover is plain. I actually need to put my created by Tony on here. I have to find that stamp. I am so proud of my signatures on this. I actually used a bullet journal. <laughs> I cut it out and I put it on here, just the, the all the dots, and I lined it up and created that. So that's the finished project. If you are interested in seeing more of these creations, if you're interested in me doing a large tutorial, I didn't really do this tutorial style because the tutorial I followed has a very good example that will be linked down below. That's the Teal and Tattered YouTube channel that I really have been enjoying her work. And I was just so happy to have this book finished. It was really a passion project. Like I started working on it and I couldn't stop. I did this in three days and I worked like around the clock on it. <laughs> so it really, I mean, from the, everything from getting the book to buying the, the trims, like all of the things, there were a lot of things that I had pre done and had pre purchased. Like I had pre made these hand rolled flowers and pre fussy cut these and I, I had a lot of these papers and magazines and stuff but it uh, it was yeah really it was a lot of work but a labor of love for sure so thank you so much for watching if you're not already subscribed to my channel and you'd like to follow along go ahead and hit that subscribe button give me a thumbs up if you've made it all this way to the very end I'm curious to see how many people watch until the very end thanks so much for watching we'll see you again next time